Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be restoring and upgrading this damaged Microsoft Surface Pro 4. While the glass isn't cracked, the LCD underneath has somehow been damaged, causing the display to show a large black spot and flickering lines. These Surface tablets are known to be difficult to repair, but I'm up for the challenge. This happens to be the Core i5 model with 8 gigs of onboard RAM. While fixing the display, I will also be installing a 500 gig Samsung Evo Plus so we can see just how far we can push this surface. This will double the current 256 gigs of storage. I purchased this tablet for $315. Similar spec units in a working condition are currently going for around 600 to 700 Australian dollars. Included with mine was the tablet itself and the power adapter. Turning it on, we can see the display's damage and the various flickering lines. There also seems to be quite a bit of ghosting and burn-in happening on the display panel as well. I will shut it down so we can start the repair. Strangely enough, there was a slight gap at the top of my surface, enough to insert a pick. Of course, I won't be able to remove this display without using some heat as well, but I just thought that was interesting to note. The display panel itself doesn't look like it's ever been removed though, and the casing of this Surface Pro is in excellent shape. In fact, it really doesn't look like it's been used that much at all. I'll need to continue heating around the edge with an old SMD rework station, which I've repurposed into a heat gun. This process can take some time, and it's also very easy to power up the surface given the location of the power button. I did this a number of times, although the display panel was still working, so I could just keep turning it off again. After working my way around the edges of the display, it was now coming loose. I can carefully lift up on the display panel and use some more heat if necessary to be able to separate the display from the frame. Carefully lifting it up, I'll need to disconnect two cables. Strangely enough, they're hidden underneath two shields, which are actually quite difficult to remove. After getting the cable shield removed, I can disconnect that flex cable and move across to the other. This other cable is responsible for the touch and pen input. It's also hidden under one of these shields, which has a fair few of these little tabs which need to be released so you can lift it out of place. This is very thin and easy to bend. With it removed, I can disconnect the cable going to the motherboard and remove the cables going to the display. This little connection board will need to be transferred to our new screen as it doesn't include one. With our old display completely detached, you can see just how thin and flexible the panel is. For our replacement display, I've chosen this one from iFixit. This is a Samsung display panel for the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. I'm going to start by installing the touch control board onto our new display. We'll need to test the display prior to attaching the adhesive so we can confirm everything works. The first cable going to the touch control board connected just fine. However, I ran into an issue with the main LCD cable. It just wouldn't connect. At a closer inspection, it looked a little bit different, and it turns out the cable is significantly larger than the connection on our new display panel. And taking a closer look between our new and old panel, it's also significantly different. It turns out, the old panel was actually manufactured from LG. On the actual listing for this display, it does note in the description that the Samsung display panel is not compatible as a replacement for any LG displays on the Surface Pro 4. So what I had to do next was actually look up the model number of that display panel as I couldn't find replacements anywhere. Turns out the display is identical to the one found in the Pro 5 and Pro 6. So I ordered one of those and we're going to see if that works on my Surface Pro 4. It appears I have some kind of revised model, which I'm going to call the Surface 4.5. I will apply some new adhesive to the PCB before attaching it to our second display from LG. While I've got the display off, this is an excellent time to be upgrading the storage of our tablet. Now, as a proof of concept, I'm going to be doing this, although I don't actually need more storage in this device. After removing a shield, you can access that SSD. And as you can see, it's a standard M.2 NVMe drive. 
So I went out and purchased a replacement Samsung Evo Plus. This is an incredibly fast SSD, so we're going to see how fast we can get this Surface Pro 4 to go. I'll need to remove the old one by taking out one Torx screw and simply removing it from the slot. The new one plugs straight in with no adapters or any unnecessary adjustments needed. I can reinstall the screw and we're good to go. I'm going to connect our LG panel up and this time our connector goes into place without any worries. I can reinstall the shield onto the SSD and we can test out the Surface Pro 4. I'll need to reinstall Windows 10 Pro as it's a blank drive. So I created a bootable USB to do just that. Thankfully our new SSD is detected without an issue and we can begin the installation of Microsoft Windows. After completion we can see we're back up and running and if I go into the settings the activation of Windows 10 Pro has been done automatically. Now that we know our drive is functioning and Windows is activated I'm going to need to remove our display panel once again so we can get the new adhesive applied. In my case I'll be replacing the old adhesive as it's no longer strong enough to adhere the new display. The adhesive Microsoft has used is unlike anything I've ever come across. It's almost like a tar or rubber. I applied some alcohol to soften the adhesive. This only seemed to soften the top layer while leaving most of it behind. I did repeat this process many times completely covering the adhesive in alcohol with little progress. After finding that alcohol just made a complete mess of things, I just decided to scrape it off with a spudger with no added chemicals. At the top, on the plastic pieces, the adhesive was relatively easy to remove, compared to the rest of the surface. In fact, I was even able to wrap it around a pair of tweezers, which assisted in the removal. This however didn't work for the sides, as the adhesive tended to snap and break as I twisted it. So I resorted to just scraping it with a metal tool. This worked quite effectively, although it took about 45 minutes to get all that adhesive removed. Don't underestimate the strength of this glue. It's crazy. I wouldn't usually recommend reusing adhesive, but if you have to do a display replacement on a Surface Pro 4, I would actually recommend using the old adhesive if possible. However, this could result in the screen not sitting entirely flush after installation. But if you're looking for that perfect finish, the adhesive should be replaced like I'm doing here. The various metal tools I used did chip away the finish of the tablet where the adhesive sits. However, this won't be visible after installation. With the majority of the gunk removed, I could then use more alcohol and various other adhesive removers to get rid of all the remaining residue. Proceeding, we can install some new glue. For this, I've used some tape as I wasn't able to source any of the original stuff that would have been used. This will work just fine as the device isn't water resistant. So as long as the display is held in place firmly, this won't be an issue. I cut each piece to size and try to cover as much area as possible. I'll also need to mend any of the damage done to the shields when they were removed. Giving the Surface tablet a good clean on the inside will remove any of the fingerprints or dust that have accumulated inside. Attaching the display for the last time, we can connect the shielding back into place after installing the flex cables and remove all of the protective film on our new adhesive strips. The next step is the most important and that is to test the device before we seal the screen onto the frame. You don't want to find any issues after attaching as the surface is a difficult device to open. When we're good to go, I can press and seal our new display panel into place. The last thing I'll need to do is remove the plastic protective film.
and we're done. So this is it, a working and upgraded Microsoft Surface Pro 4. Packing an Intel Core i5 processor running at 2.5 GHz, 8 GB of RAM and a 500 GB SSD. As for the speeds received from our new SSD, we saw no increase on the read but a significant increase to the write speed. Unfortunately this is due to the Surface's PCI interface only running at 2x, so it can't harness the full speed of our Samsung SSD. My advice is if you're upgrading the storage, stick to a mid-tier drive for the best value for your money. Don't forget there's always the option of adding a slower SD card to increase space. While this device was quite difficult to upgrade and perform repairs to, Microsoft appears to be taking the opposite approach with their newer products. The latest Surface tablet has an access door under the stand for upgrading the SSD. Microsoft has also showed us that they're listening to their customers with their new Surface laptop. It's no longer glued together like previous models, and in fact, they opened it up on stage. This is awesome and proves companies can make devices more repairable if they choose to. As for our old SSD, I repurposed it into an external drive using this enclosure. And for those thinking that I may actually have a newer Surface than what I've been talking about, you can see in the BIOS it shows up as a Surface Pro 4, even though it's got that Surface Pro 5 slash 6 display installed on it. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the computer playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for some tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.